I want to tell you a story that's been 10 years in the making, and it's about why I think this is one of the best laptops I've ever owned, and one of the best laptops you can buy, period. Yes, even better than the M1 and M2 MacBook Airs. And cutting right to the chase, it's the late 2021 Apple Silicon MacBook Pros. And I've held off on making this video for a while, mainly because although it is a great laptop, the price was just too high for most people. But then Apple did something no one could have expected. For some reason, less than a year after they announced it, Apple decided to cut the price by $400, bringing the 14-inch MacBook Pro to the insane price of just $15.99, a 20% discount, and $2,099 for the 16-inch version. So in this video, I want to talk about specifically why these MacBooks are so good compared to other competitors, and I'll also dive into that massive price cut and discuss what it might mean for the future of Apple Silicon MacBooks. Also, quick thanks to Insta360 for sponsoring this video, but more on that later. Okay, so to give you an idea of my laptop journey over the last 10 years, it's safe to say I've tried many laptops from both sides. From an old school Dell Latitude in 2008 to various Windows gaming laptops, MacBook Pros, and even tablet hybrids from the Microsoft Surface lineup. All of them had their pros and cons, but one that stood out to me was the 2015 15-inch MacBook Pro. The 15-inch form factor was a great balance between portability and productivity, the port selection was decent, and the Retina screen, although it had been around for a few years already, was miles ahead of the competition. Now, performance wasn't great, there was some thermal throttling with the Intel CPUs, and also the R9 M370X GPU if you had the spec I'm showing on screen now. But overall, it was a very solid laptop. And I think between 2016 and 2021, Apple actually went backwards with this lineup. The 16-inch Intel MacBook Pros had the same throttling issues as the 15-inch, but even worse. They also had a few new flaws, and none of these were resolved until the new Apple Silicon MacBook Pros were released. Now, before we get into my specific MacBook Pro, obviously, if you don't need the power of the M1 Pro or M1 Max, either the M1 or M2 MacBook Air is a great option. But honestly though, at the end of the day, if you're just browsing the web and doing emails, there are a lot of decent options in the entry-level laptop space. And although they might not be as premium and feature-rich as the MacBook Air, Again, they all accomplish essentially the same task. But what about those users with workflows that are too intensive for the MacBook Air? Well, at the time, there were a few options. The 16-inch Intel MacBook Pro that was essentially a furnace, a chunky Windows laptop, or an RTX desktop PC, like the one I was using at that time. But these were your only options, and all of these options had massive compromises, like the RTX laptop and all the associated thermal, fan noise, and wattage requirements, or the lack of portability with the desktop. If you wanted something portable, silent, and cool all at the same time, that simply was not an option. Until, of course, Apple announced their new Apple Silicon MacBook Pros. Okay, so let's talk about my specific MacBook Pro. And I wanna clarify that I'm not saying this exact spec or the 16 inch form factor is the best. Honestly, I think the 14 inch base model provides the most bang for buck, but I needed extra performance in some areas. So the spec I personally have is an upgraded 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. But no matter what laptop you choose, it's probably going to have a pretty crappy webcam, even the upgraded 1080p webcam on the M2 MacBook Air. And they don't really do much other than record a grainy image of your face. Enter the Insta360 link, an AI powered 4K webcam with features that blow your MacBook's webcam out of the water. Its half inch sensor not only allows for great 4K image quality, but excellent low light performance in dimly lit rooms. And the true focus feature means no more blurry shots. Using artificial intelligence and its three axis gimbal, the Link webcam allows you to use hand gestures to enable AI tracking, where the webcam will follow you around the room or zoom in and out, or for those of you in work or school environments, enable whiteboard mode. 
There's also a desk view mode, which I would have loved to have back in university, and built-in privacy protection when the webcam is not in use. So if you want to check out the Insta360 Link webcam in more detail, make sure you use the link in the description down below. So why do I think this is one of the best laptops out there, even when compared to the competition from the other team? Well, Apple has always traditionally leaned more towards the creative side of things, which is what I mainly do with photo and video editing, website design, 2D animation, and even some coding that I'm trying to get into. And I think many people that buy these more powerful MacBooks fall into these categories. Now, Windows laptops can do all of this too and more. For example, they're much better at machine learning, 3D modeling and gaming, and they're also usually much cheaper, sometimes by 50%. But they come with flaws, just like every laptop. For example, needing to be attached to a charger for full performance, or very loud fan noise and thermal output when under load. The build quality is nowhere near the MacBook either, and I actually compared my MacBook against two powerful Ryzen and Intel laptops, and I'll link those two comparison videos in the description. But in a nutshell, for my workflow and for daily use, I found there was absolutely no comparison, even if the MacBook cost a thousand US dollars more. I mean, the build quality alone on the MacBook is exceptional. Find me another laptop machined from a solid piece of aluminium, an incredible trackpad, and one of the best screens ever made, which is essentially a shrunk down version of the $5,000 Pro Display XDR. Plus, the way macOS balances temperature, performance, and fan noise together is just incredible. Yes, repairability sucks, and that's something I've criticized Apple for in previous videos, but the overall experience is just so good that I found it didn't matter to me personally, as much as I hate to admit that. And I know I sound like a massive Apple fanboy here, and maybe I am, but I think even the most diehard PC fans and I used to be one, can at least agree that Apple's done a good job with their own silicon recently. No matter how hard you push these MacBooks, they stay relatively cool and quiet and consume far less power, allowing much more portability and battery life if that is important to you while competing with the RTX laptops in many areas. Quick side note though, it's annoying that the HDMI port is only HDMI 2.0 and not 2.1, it seems like a strange choice on a professional laptop in 2021, but I admit this is a very niche requirement and most people won't care. Now, the reason I went with the 16 inch form factor over 14 inches is because this is my main computer for work. I don't wanna be tied to a desktop and a 14 inch screen is just too small for me personally. Yes, portability does take a hit. The 16 inch MacBook is heavy and bulky much more noticeably so than the 14 inch. You can't use the 16 inch on airplane tray tables and it barely fits into some bags. The 14 inch is much, much better for portability. And for those of you on the fence about which screen size to get, just ask yourself this one question. How much portability do you actually need? For me, I mainly move between desks from home to office and also sitting around on the couch. You don't need an ultra portable laptop for that. And I'd rather have the much bigger screen, better battery and cooling capacity of the larger form factor. So let's address this insane price decrease for these MacBook Pro base models. Now I was honestly a bit shocked when I saw how much it was because Apple usually doesn't discount their products and certainly not by that much and certainly not in the middle of a massive inflationary period combined with supply shortages. What this means though, is that the value proposition of the current Apple Silicon MacBook lineup changes significantly when you consider the new price of the 14 inch MacBook Pro. The 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro was already an unpopular choice, but now it's all but obsolete. I'm really struggling to think of any situation where someone would buy it over the much more feature rich 14 inch M1 Pro. And it also makes the new M2 MacBook Air a much harder choice. Previously, if you upgraded the Air to a 512 gigabyte SSD and 16 gigabytes of RAM, it was still a fair bit cheaper than the 14 inch. Now though, it's the same price. 
course, there are still many reasons to go for the Air over the 14-inch M1 Pro, notably form factor and the vastly reduced weight and increased portability. But man, that's about it. And even then, I think a lot of people wouldn't mind the extra bulk for all those additional features for the same price. So what's the reason for this insane price decrease? Well, it could be that Apple is unveiling an M2 Pro and M2 Max upgrade for the 14 and 16 inch MacBooks later this year. Most signs point to these new chips using the same five nanometer architecture of the M2 chip we saw earlier this year and not three nanometer as previously suspected. To me personally, if these MacBooks are refreshed with M2 chips, it would be pretty surprising. Firstly, it's not like Apple has a lot of excess stock of M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBooks. They can barely keep up with the current demand. It's only been a year since they were released. And also, I think they're already powerful enough. Doing videos for this channel puts me in the fortunate position of being on the bleeding edge of technology, where I can justify more frequent upgrades than, say, the average consumer. But I don't see myself needing any more power or performance for at least three to four years. And personally, I think Apple is making the price cheaper simply to be ultra competitive with other brands. Apple has an absolute boatload of cash locked away in various bank accounts across the planet. They can afford discounting products or the increased supply costs. And now they have a laptop that can compete in a lot of areas with many of the really powerful and chunky Windows laptops out there. If there was ever a time to aggressively grow your market share, it's now and with this product. So yeah, I think these 14 and 16 inch MacBooks are really some of the best laptops you can buy right now. I really don't think that even if we do see an M2 or an M3 come out in the next couple of years, there's gonna be that much of a worthwhile or noticeable upgrade between the generations. I think it's gonna be very similar to the difference we saw between the M1 MacBook Air and the M2 MacBook Air, but even less because we're gonna have the same chassis, the same screen, the same ports. It's just gonna be a very minor spec upgrade to the internals, just the actual chip itself, which I don't think many people are gonna notice if at all. But apart from that guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.